All right, coach is here, and uh, we will get started. Um, Brian Christofferson, 24-7. Hey, Scott. Um, your guys still seem quite energized to play through the grind of this season. What What do you think is are the main reasons your guys haven't tailed off? Because I know it's a struggle around college football to, to go through this. Uh, I think we have more guys on the team now that love football. And that certainly helps. I think we got guys that care about each other more. Um, they still feel like they're uh, having fun playing and have something to prove. Diedrich Mills said an interesting thing. His quote was, there's just a lot of negative talk on Nebraska, so we want to prove everybody wrong. I think he was talking about some of the national conversation of, about Nebraska. Have you sensed that guys feed off that a little bit? Does that provide some energy too? some of what people have said about Nebraska football? I hope not, because we tell them not to read anything that's out there. That has nothing to do with us, and we just need to focus on us. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Steve Sipple, Gerald Starr. Um, as a play caller, Scott, how much did it help to have Mills back there? Yeah, it helped. I thought he ran tough, um, made a couple good blocks, did a lot of good things. Um, we've been missing him. He's our only veteran back there. Um, it's just weird how the day worked out. Um, we weren't sure if we are going to have him. And then the night before game, we didn't think we were going to have Marvin. So um, we still felt good about who we had. But he, he went out in warm-ups and looked good and um, played a big role. So you weren't sure you weren't sure if Diedrich would be ready to roll? No, he practiced during the week, but he certainly wasn't 100%. So it was, we were just going to wait and see how he looked in warm-ups. Had a good warm up, so he said he was ready, and we went with it. One other thing, Brendan Hymas has made thirty nine straight starts. That's what does that stat alone tell you about him? Well, he he's been a key piece of what we've been doing. Um, great kid, really good player. He stayed healthy. He's been committed and dedicated. So um, we're grateful we have him. Thank you. Jake Bartecki, care and you. Coach, can you speak a little bit to your kicking situation? I mean, that's a position that's been a little bit of a revolving door since you got here. Now you have Connor Culp. He's been really consistent, made a career long uh, on Saturday. And just how much of a relief is it to have consistency in that position? And how much does it affect your game plan and play calling and whatnot? Yeah, it's big. We haven't been very good at that spot um, the first couple years here. Uh, he certainly gives us a guy that we can count on. I get less nervous when I send the, the field goal unit out there. Uh, we start um, thinking about kicking a field goal uh, deep from farther out uh, because of his range. So it gives us a lot more confidence and um, glad he glad he's a part of what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Mitch Sherman, The Athletic. Hey, Scott. Um, one more or another one on Diedrich. Um, it's pretty clear from listening to him talk how, how much uh, he loves Nebraska, how much it's meant to him over the past two years. And obviously he hasn't been able to do some of the things in his senior year that he would want or would have envisioned. Um, what would it mean for you guys if you had the chance to get him back next year? Um, listen, I love all these seniors. Um, great bunch of kids that have stuck it out through a lot. But I don't, I don't want to start talking about next year. we got a big game this weekend, and we'll, we'll have all those discussions after the season. So on, as far as Diedrich's passion, um, you know, how, how do you see that play out on a day-by-day -day basis, just, to, just to, the feelings that he has to, to be in this program? He's just always happy, uh, always has a smile on his face, is always positive to be around, and I, and I think that uh, impacts the rest of the team in a positive way. Um, just such a likable guy. Uh, and good teammate and, and does whatever he needs to do for the team. Do you, do you have anything on Miles Farmer? Anything new? Yeah, Miles had surgery. Uh, we won't have Miles the rest of the year, but the long-term uh, outlook is good. Evan Bland, World Herald. Hey, Scott, a lot of the players today are talking about how do you respond to a win, obviously better than, than they did against the, after the Penn State game? What, I guess, what uh, have you seen from those guys these last couple of days? And what's been that lesson about how you come back from a win as opposed to a loss? Well, it, you, you got to learn from a win and learn from a loss. Um, I, I've really seen our habits and 
a lot of things around the building get better the last uh, couple weeks. Um, coming off a win, you got to double down on that. Do even more of it. Um, make sure you're focused. Focus is good. Your practice habits are good. Your effort's good. Um, and I expect the guys to, to respond well this week. Parker Gabriel, Journal Star. Hey, Scott, sort of a maybe minutia, but should Austin Allen have done something differently on the on the chop block that he got called for? It was sort of a, you use your tight ends in motion like that a lot. He's made that block a lot of times. I'm just curious what you saw when you watch Allen back. Yeah, uh, we kind of got to get clarification on that because I'm, I'm a little hazy too. Uh, they kind of gave me two different explanations and we'd practiced, uh, that being said, we'd practice staying up on that block and just kicking out all week. Um, so uh, Austin played a, a really good game. He's had a great season. Um, we'll get that fixed as a coaching staff. And then uh, my other question is, at this point in the season, is, is there any chance that you'll have uh, Omar Manning back in the receiver rotation at this point, or, or is his season over? Um, I, I couldn't say for sure, but we, we just got to get him healthy and um, – He's going to make us a better team when he's out there. Sean Callahan, Husker Online. Hey, Coach. Um, what can you talk about Minnesota here or say about Minnesota when you watch them? Obviously, um, the situation, they've been out two weeks in a row. How tough would that be to kind of manage as a coach and then come back and potentially play here this week? Uh, they're going to be fresh and ready. Uh, I'm sure they've had time to look at us. Uh, I feel bad for them that they've had the – COVID cases that they've had, that's tough. It's just a tough year. Um, you know, they whipped us last year up there. Um, did a great job with game plan, coaching, and playing, and, and um, certainly got the better of us. Um, I think our guys are anxious to play. I'm sure theirs are too. And then week nine, Coach, um, you know, you guys will be playing a game. What do you know about week nine? It just seems odd that really nobody seems to know much across this conference. Uh, you're going to be playing a game on December 19th, and there really aren't any details about who, where, when, where at, at this point right now. Yeah, count me in the group that doesn't know much. So we're focused on this week. We'll worry about that later. Andrew Ward, KLKN. Hey, Scott, we just talked to a lot of your seniors. Just do you have a word to describe this class, and, and why choose that word? Uh, they're tough and they're resilient. I'd probably pick those two. Um, they've been through a whole heck of a lot and uh, really starting to see growth on our football team. I've been seeing it for a while. It's starting to, to show up on the field, and those guys spearhead that. So it, it's a tough group. Sam McEwen, World Herald. Hey, Scott. Uh, you must have seen something in Adrian after – uh, maybe it was after Penn State, maybe it was after Illinois, that convinced you that that he could go in and do the things that you wanted him to do that he hadn't done earlier in the season. And he's done those things. What did you see in those practices that convinced you to do that? And how do you feel like he's rebounded just as a leader and as a player? Um, the rebound is impressive. Um, really, Sam, I saw that improvement from both quarterbacks. Uh, when I told them it was a competition going into Iowa game, uh, both of them had exceptional weeks of practice that week. And um, we played both of them. Our plan was to play both. And uh, the same this week. Uh, I think they've just been practicing better. Um, we've been completing more balls, getting them off on time, making better decisions. And that's translated to the field. And um, I don't know if what happened uh, – was a motivation. I know uh, in my college career, had a couple negative things happen, and I used that as a, a motivation, had a chip on my shoulder. So I, I don't really know if that's it or if uh, some success has led to more confidence. But either way, both guys are practicing better and uh, playing better on the field. You in the last couple of weeks have leaned more on, um, best way to put it is walk-ons. Uh, Levi Falk and Oliver Martin, I know he's a scholarship guy from another school, but. Oliver Martin, Levi Falk, White Lever. Um, was there was there also a shift there where you guys decided we're just going to play the guys that know the playbook and we'll do what we ask them to do? Um. Yeah, one thing we did look at is you know we we had a bunch of guys that were close, some of them being young and learning, some others that have been here, and um, 
we kind of figured we were doing a little disservice by spreading the reps out too much. So we did want to narrow it down a little bit. Um, but that group of guys you see playing has been dedicated to this. Um, you know, we knew our walk-on program would take a while to, to help us. Uh, those guys typically don't come in and play as freshmen. Uh, but if you take the time to develop them, they're going to help. And in year three, I think you're starting to see a lot of those guys uh, contribute. Uh, it was great to see Wyatt in the end zone. And uh, Oliver and Levi certainly had good games, too. Thank you. Thank you. Aaron Sorensen, Hale Varsity. Hey, Coach, six games in, how do you think Matt Lubick has influenced the offense at this point? Um, he's been a positive for us. Uh, our receivers keep improving. Uh, he makes my life a lot easier. Uh, I can focus more on the team and attitudes and culture and um, things of that nature because a lot of it's getting taken care of for me. So um, Matt's a huge asset to us and especially to me. Back to Parker Gabriel, General Star. Hey Scott, could you um, give just your thoughts on on the level that Cam Taylor Britt is is playing at? Obviously, it seems like he's really settled into playing corner well, and and DiCaprio had high words of praise, uh, sort of for where he's at at this point in his career. Yeah, I thought both those guys played a, a really good game on Saturday. Um, both talented. Uh, Cam Cam did some really good things and has all year and. Uh, I think he's on track to be to be one of our uh, best players around here in a while. So uh, we're lucky to have him. We're going to keep coaching him, and um, we expect that kind of play out of those two guys every week. Uh, back to Steve Sipple. Xavier Betts is clearly settling in a little bit, at least. Where has he made the most progress in the last couple of weeks? It's just knowledge, Sip. I mean. Uh, you know, he's he's a freshman. He's coming on. Uh, he's talented. He just had to get comfortable with everything, know the signals, know the plays, know the details, know the routes. Um, he still made a mistake here and there. Uh, ran one run, wrong route on, on Saturday. Didn't end up costing us. Uh, but uh, he, he's a special player when we get him the ball. So we got to keep bringing those guys along. And uh, said it a bunch. We have a lot of players like that that really could have benefited from spring ball, fall camp, non-conference schedule, all those things, and um, they didn't get the luxury of any of that. So uh, we're working overtime to try to get those guys more and more comfortable with what we're doing, and I think they've been improving every week. How would you characterize Xavier's practice habits on a daily basis? He practiced hard. Um, he, he goes out and does his job. Um, doesn't look like he's running sometimes. He's still running fast. Uh, but he doesn't have any idea how good he can be if, uh, if he stays on track and has good habits and, and works hard. And we're going to try to convince him of that and show him how that's done. Thank you. Uh, one time for two or three more. Kevin Suits. Coach, this is the seventh straight week you're going to play at 11 a.m. And I ask this question just because so many fans talk about it. What are your thoughts on playing uh, in the morning game? And then, I guess, additionally, what is the preferred time from a team's perspective to play on Saturday? I think we'd all enjoy the we all enjoy the 11 a.m. games. Um, we're a practice morning practice operation anyway. Um, so our guys are used to getting up and getting started. And um, certainly, especially on road games, it's better to get get home early than be flying home late at night. So. Um, we win enough games uh, down the road. Maybe we get moved to some other slots. But right now, uh, we're just anxious to play whenever they, whenever they post the time. Uh, Mitch Sherman, the athletic. <clears throat> I know you talked uh, last year after the Minnesota game quite a bit about physicality. Um, what, what kind of a role did that game in particular play in, in the program and in helping everybody recognize what, was, what exactly was needed um, in, in the uh, you know, they just out physical this. They they executed better. They they played harder than us. Um, they beat us, and um, uh, we can't let that happen. Um, we got to do everything we can. They're really good in the run game. They run run right at you and run mid zone, and uh, have RPOs that a really good quarterback throws off that. And the running back is is one of the best that we'll see. Um, really good player. So. Uh, we got to be ready for that on defense and uh, got to try to establish a run game on offense. And 
that doesn't change week to week, but um, these guys really demand it out of you when you play Minnesota. Finish up with Coach, back to Sam McEwen. Hey, Scott, I know you don't want to count your chickens before they hatch, um, but signing day is in uh, nine days, I guess. And based on what we've heard, there's a lot of guys that are planning to enroll early. And I'm curious, knowing what you know now about COVID and the environment that athletes are going to come into, are you, are you going to ask players to really think about whether they want to enroll early uh, or are you comfortable with all of them coming and knowing ahead of time that it's going to be a little bit different than, say, high school? Uh, we're comfortable with them coming early, Sam. And, and this goes a little back to what we said at the beginning of the season that, um, you know, this isn't the only place. Our campus is the only place with the COVID problem. Uh, those kids have an opportunity to get exposed to it no matter where they are. And in fact, uh, we've had so few uh, cases since the season started because our players are being disciplined, doing the right things. Um, we have them in a safe environment. And I really, like I said before, think this is the safest place for them. So I don't think that's going to be any different for a, a freshman coming in. And um, it, yeah, I, I feel comfortable with them coming and would encourage them to come if they want to. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys. And uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow.